Hi, welcome to Soloing Concepts, Soloing Out of Chord Shapes, 1 to the 4 chord. So what we're going to look at here is how our three areas of activity, the F shape or the E shape, depending on how you see that, the A shape and the C shape, how each one can fold and become, or fold lines into the 4 chord. How we're going to do this is we're going to have all of our examples in G and we're going to take our you know, first area of activity, the F chord, and check out where the closest four chord is to it that fits into our areas of activity, the F, A, or C shape. We're going to look at the major chord, then the dominant seven chord in each area and in each chord, one and four chord. After that, we're going to take a look at three lines in each position that utilize uh, some leading tones that get us from the one to the four chord, specifically the flat seven and how that leads in to the four chord. So let's get started. Our first area of activity is the F shape. Here's our G chord right here. We have G, D, G, B, D, G. Now to make that a flat seven, all we gotta do is lift up our pinky and we've got G7 chord because what we're doing is we're lowering the G, our one, to a flat seven, the F. If it was a major seven, it would be an F sharp and you would get this sound. So we've got G, G7. Our closest four chord in this position is our, or it's a C chord and our closest shape is the A shape. So we have C, G, C, E. If we make it flat seven, take the C, and drop it down to a B flat. C, G, B flat, E, and that G on top. So with that said, we have G, G7, C, C7. Let's take a look at this first example. I'm gonna play it and then I'll break it down and play it again. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, so let's break this down. We're first coming in, sliding into our F sharp, or our G, F sharp to G. To apply some music theory to that, we're playing our G pentatonics. You see guys like Charlie Christian and George Barnes use Elizas all the time. We've got just right down the pentatonic scale. And then we're going G B. Approach note, we have our D flat to D. B again, and then come down and play the E, D, no, I'm sorry, E, F, and that lick, that's something that Jimmy Rivers would do a lot. He would go, wait a second, you know, wait a few beats, and then go into the four chord, and that's what we do exactly right here. So before we go into the four chord, this first thing is like this, a one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then we have beat three, four, and then we come in on the end of four. So what we got going on here is playing out of this shape right here, and we're playing out of the upper structure of it, the C9 part. So the C9, or C7-9, has this E, E flat, D, the nine, flat seven, and third, and if you want, you can put the fifth in, the G. But it's still part of this shape right here. It has all the notes in it. So what we got going on here is one, two, three, four. E, G, A, B flat, 
G. And then we come up and play a triplet. A, B flat, A, or 6, 7, 6, G, D to the 9. And we camp out on the 9. Again, it's that sound. So all together, that part is one, two, three, four. Two, three, four. So all together, we've got a one, two, three, four. All right, example two. This one uh, starts off with the line that we've seen in the past two lessons, um, and we can think about it two ways, as I've said in the other two. We can think about it as a B minor chord, or we can think about it as the G major arpeggio that features a major seven and a nine, but it encloses. So just before I even play it, I just wanted to give you a heads up. That's what it's. That's what we're coming into. So I'm gonna play it and break it down. Here we go. A one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. All right. So I took this one straight from the Jimmy Rivers and Barney Kessel playbook here. We start off what I'm going to think as an enclosure, not a B minor arpeggio. It just it simplifies it in my mind. We've got. And then we're going to come down chromatically, F sharp, F, E, now we're going to land on the D, B1 of the uh, next measure. So we've got, and from there we've got, so what's happening there is we're getting ready to go into the C chord by utilizing this 7. Just like in the previous example, this flat seven resolves to the E of the, uh, the third of the C chord really nicely, just a half step. So that's why it's such a strong pull for the ear. So in uh, measure two of example two, we've got this. And all that is is chromatics, an approach. It's basically going like this. But it's easier to finger it like this. And then chromatic down to the F. Flat seven. So all together, this first two are one, two, three, four. Now we've got the next two over the C chord. Again, we're playing out of this shape or this shape. And we've got really bluesy. Um, we've got E, G, B, flat, then G, then playing off this C right here. All right, and then this last part is a quarter note, then again, we're just kind of playing a rhythmic variation of what we just played. So all together, the last C part is... So all together, example two, a one, a two, a one, two, three, four. All right, example three, our last one in this F shape. Here, let's try this out. A one, two, a one, two, three, four. So this one starts, it's a little, the chord change is a little different than the uh, previous two examples. We've got B, D, F, D, then G, F sharp, F, that chromatic line, and then back up to the G. So, and what we're doing there is just outlining that seven arpeggio. 
then we do the same thing for the C chord. That same pattern. E, G, B flat, G, C, E, B flat, C. Then to resolve back to the G chord, we go B, G. So all together, that progression is going to go G, C7, G, G, C7. So what that is, are the first six bars of the blues. A normal blues where it goes one, four, one, one, then four, four, and then it would go back to the one. So we've got and then we wait beats two, three, four, and then we come in on the end. So it's one, two, three, four. So what we've got going there is chromatic up to the B, and then we've got just going up the scale, D, E, F, that F really leading us to the four chord there. Playing the nine, talked about our uh, seven nine arpeggios. Then we come back to the F and do a chromatic up to this E. And then we're on the C chord. So we've got one, two, three, four. And then E, E, B flat, E. Then we go to the A, E, A. So all that's playing around with is the flat seven and the six of the C chord. resolve it to the G. So all together the C chord is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. This example all together. A one, a two, one, two, three, four. to our next area of activity, the C chord shape. Here we've got our G chord, and then to make it a G7, what we're going to do is kind of shift our fingers around a bit. We're going to have this G, B, and this D that we normally play through the G chord is going to come up to this F right there. And then we're going to play this high G on the eighth fret. That's our G7. So we've got G, G7, and then our C chord is this F shape right here, and then just as we did it with the G chord, in the first three examples, we've got C7 right there. We just take the C and make it a B flat. So G, G7, C, C7. A really great uh, way to kind of just grain, ingrain these into your head is just to do that. You know, start off going G, G7, C, C7, G. And it's like your fingers after, you know, doing it a thousand times will know that that's where the nearest four chord is. That's where the nearest whatever chord is. Whatever you're trying to drill into your hands, it'll just know that that's where that stuff is. Same thing here. I would really recommend doing that in all the, all the songs you play. Whatever you play, find songs and figure out, okay, if we're in C, C, C7, my four chord would be the F there, F7, C. But anyway, that's just a really quick little uh, exercise I wanted to let you know about before we go on to example four. So with that said, example four, here we go. One, two, one, two, three, four. So this is how we're doing this one. We're sliding in on the and of four to our B note, the three of the G chord. And we're coming down 
an arpeggio that is a major six because of that E right there. The, uh, the six in G is E. It's a total Western th uh, swing thing here to do. And now we're bouncing back between the D and the E, and then we'll add the F, the flat seven here in a minute. So it goes. And then for the C chord, what we're doing is we're coming in this shape right here, and we're going one. And all that is, is starting on the B and sliding up, doing a triplet of the arpeggio, C, E, G, hitting the flat seven, because that really shows it. This is a C chord. And then hitting the A and G, or the six and five. And there are a couple ways you can do this. Uh, to make that little sweep or rake, what I would do is go all the way down. Don't try to alternate. It doesn't have the same uh, phrasing of it. You want to go pick, slide, down, down, up. So all together, example four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So example five, one, two, three, four. All right, that's a really big line. That's a cool one now. So what we got off is D, just chromatic down from D, and then slide. like our previous one, we've got that major six arpeggio, and then we're going to come up to the flat seven, getting ready to go to that C chord, so F, E, and then we're coming up the arpeggio again, so it ends again with that chromatic, we've got F, E, G, B, D, D flat, C, B, so all together we've from the G chord up to the C chord, it's and one quick note, you see that I'm utilizing that sound a lot. That's totally okay. You can play the same thing multiple times in a solo, heck in two measures. What that does is it creates a theme, and that's the theme I'm playing around here. It's a chromatic theme that utilizes our five, flat five, four, and three. So that's one thing to note. In your own solos, you don't have to play everything you know. You can mess around with playing the same thing a couple different ways and in different variations, and it's really effective. With that said, let's go on to the C chord. We're gonna play C and down to the octave C and come up the arpeggio. And here we're borrowing from an example I've done in the last two lessons where we go and make an enclosure. So we've got C, C, E, G, B, D, C, that enclosure, B, D, C. And then we're going to come down, or we got, and then we're play this G, and then come down chromatically, B, B flat, A, G. So we've got so far from the C we got then we're gonna land on this E right here, the third, and do chromatic down there to the nine. C and land on the C there, and then we're gonna land on the B to be back on our G chord. So that second part of the C chord phrase goes. Is a chromatic run all downwards. So all together the second part of that phrase the C is one, two, three, four. Back to that G. So all together, example five. One, two, three, four. Alright, 
to example six. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, so what we have going on here is kind of like we did this, that enclosure, or the one we just did right here for the C. We're doing that same kind of pattern, the three, five, major seven, nine, one pattern, but with this G chord right here. So we've got B, D, F sharp, A, G, then we come down and play our E, and then do a triplet pull off, so a hammer on pull off, so it's, so all together that first part. Then we play the E again, F sharp, E, E flat, D, B. So that second part of the phrase is all together over the G chord is one, two, three, four. rest on beat four, then a rest on beat one, and we ended on this B, and now we're going to come and play this E to start the C chord line. We've got E, G, B flat, D, E. So that's a 7-9 arpeggio. So that's one, two, and three, and four. Out of that shape, remember? And then finish that off, we're going to go E, E flat, D, C, D, E flat. So that last part of the C chord is one, two, three, four, one. All right, our last area of activity is our A shape. For our A shape, we have our G chord. G, D, G, B. To make that a flat seven, we just drop this G to an F and go G, D, F, B. Our closest shape here is a little interesting. We could play this shape, but as I mentioned in the previous two lessons, specifically in lesson one, I believe, um, the cage system is useful but the problem with the cage system is it has a few chords that are just really hard to play um, and don't have too much use. That, if we're using the uh, key of C as an example, it's the G chord shape, that thing, and then this D chord shape. But with that said, they are the basis of what I like to call extensions off of our three main areas of activity. So if, to uh, use this as an example, for our four chord, the C, an extension of that would be this D chord shape right here, or D, just with that C in the bass. But, you know, you're never going to play this as a chord, well, at least not too often. But what we can see as, what we can see is it's just a part that's in between this shape and the C chord shape right here. That would be that. So with that said, I would highly recommend you learning just the extension of it off of that and just kind of see it for what it is and how you can shift it from. When I practice my scales a ton, you know, I would do this. You know, just figure out all the different ways you can shift between the two. So you're not technically seeing this as a chord shape all too often, but just as an extension of this chord shape. So we have our C, and then for our C7, this is a much friendlier one. It's this chord. We've got C, G, B flat, E. Charlie Christian all day. He used that shape. So this is a great shape to play out. We've got a couple examples in here, but again, it's just an extension off of that. You know, if we're playing a C7 major scale, it all works, and in 
flows all together. And in my brain, I'm not switching chord shapes really. It's all just extensions. So with all of that, that's a lot, but that's something to keep in mind. Let's go to example seven and kind of see this stuff in use. So here we go. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Example eight, we've got one, two, three, four, one. One, two, three. Okay, so to break that down, we're coming in on the end of one and playing up the G arpeggio. And this last part, you can think of it as a G major 7 9 arpeggio. That's way too much in my mind to think about. I just think about it as an enclosure. So we've got chromatic down G, F sharp, F. So 1, 1, 2, 3. Now we've got a triplet off the E and F. We've got Again, we're playing kind of out of that shape there, the G9. And we're just coming down the scale. So the first part of that is one, two, three, four, one. And then we have the rest on beat four. And then we're just coming up a C7 arpeggio just to kind of highlight this shape right here. I'm sorry, C7 uh, scale. We got. So, one. So, C, D, E, F, G, A, B flat. And the thing about that is it's off of beat one, it's on the end. So, one, two, three, four, one. So all together, example eight, we've got one, two, three, four, one. Two, three. All right, so our last example, example nine. And Andy Reese meets Charlie Christian style lick. If you don't know who Andy Reese is, he is the guitarist for the Nashville supergroup, the Time Jumpers. Definitely check out their stuff. Swing guitar galore all day. So here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right. So here we've got kind of a Charlie Christian opening line. B, D, chromatic. And we're using this as a pedal tone. And a pedal tone is just something that we repeat a lot. Pedal on. That's the G. And then for the C chord, we're going. And then we're coming back into a G this next part. So together, those first two are. Just a bunch of chromatics. E, E flat, D, B flat, G, G flat, F. And to end it, we're going to go on the G chord here, D, D flat, C, B, octave G, from that octave there, and then back to the B, and the F, the G. Kind of a bluesy thing there, a little stink to it. So what we've got in that last part is chromatic from the D to the B, just like we did here. It's that same kind of thing. So we've got so all together, example nine, our last one. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. All right, so those are a lot of licks you can get under your fingers and feel, uh, feel free to mess around with them, alter them. That's, that's where your own voice comes through, is when you start taking what other people have done and going, oh, instead of going up, I want to go down. Or instead of playing the arpeggio, I want to play the scale. 
you know, using those different things and uh, translating licks to other shapes is the best way of kind of creating your own voice. But to, before you do all that, you have to see where all those notes are, and you gotta, you know, you need to have some stock licks in your in your arsenal uh, to pull from, and to really just have under your fingers and have that sound in your ear. So that's what I'd recommend to do. I hope you've enjoyed this, and stay tuned for the next one. Thank you.